Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission of Mech Tech Keyboards and today I have a PCB. Now many of you might know this PCB. This is the DZ60 RGB. Uh, this one in particular is the version 2. Um, there are a couple different versions including one that's the WKL that has a 7U spacebar allowing for, for Tsangan, HHKB, um, and WKL layouts. Now, I have used uh, this one and several other, I think I've purchased, I want to say either four or five uh, DZ60s, um, and have built some pretty decent uh, 3D printed kits. Uh, the DZ60 shares the same footprint as the GH60 and one of the Heinies. I think the GH is a Heine or is an H60. Uh, but there's several different boards that share the same layout. Now this one is a QMK via uh, PCB. But why do I just have a PCB today? Sometime back I got in touch with Jason over at Zepsity. Uh, I was looking to do a review of some blue Wisterias these switches right here he asked me if I was interested in the rehouse 60 and I took a look at it and I was like yeah so the rehouse 60 something that Jason um, I believe he designed or I mean it's his product it's um, just their product but it's a a new case now all of the cases that I've built for the DC 60 so far 3d printed um, were all basically just tray mounts. Uh, there was no options that I had seen to date uh, for a gas gasket mount for this particular motherboard. There may be some out there. But I must say personally, I am a big fan of acrylic, um, stacked acrylic and CNC acrylic. I think they give you a very nice starting tone for the keyboard and it's very easy to build up from there to kind of find you know, what, what sound signature you want to get. So, um, after talking about it, he was like, yeah, all right, let me send you one over. So I was like, yeah, send it over. And I can go ahead and test the blue bonnets with the, um, with the rehab. Now, he did send me out both plates. Since the PCB that I have is the DZ60 RGB, and um, this one, well, the first revision of the rehouse was released with a um, Tsangan bottom row. So it uses a different plate. Now, I have not seen him list, but he does have a plate that will work with the DZ60 RGB, it just has a standard bottom row. So there are two different plates, but if you do want one with the standard size uh, space bar, I would reach out to Jason um, over at Subsidy and see if he's if he has them in stock. So I don't know if they were ready for the market because I don't see them listed, or maybe he just hasn't had a chance to update stock. So we have the stacked acrylic, we have a bag of hardware, and we have what I assume are the feet. So it's been a minute since I've built the stacked acrylic kit, but this one looks like it should be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So now here I have the PCB, the kit, as well as the blue bonnet switches. Uh, now I kind of cheated a little bit because I've already got the uh, stabilizers installed on this PCB as I pull it out of an, a 3D print project that I had. Um, I am going to be doing a separate individual switch review of the blue bonnet, but um, just real quick, it's a, uh, a both nylon top and bottom housing. It's got a palm stem. Um, and the spring is a 60 gram actuation with like a 72 gram uh, bottom out. I like heavy um, and I like how this feels. Now the sound though, uh, I was expecting it to be a little bit more on the, the deeper side based on the, the um, specs, but it's, uh, it's definitely a little bit more high pitched. It's, it's, it's clacky. So this should make for an interesting uh, combination with this kit. I went ahead and removed the um, protective uh, backing 
more sticker off the couple of pieces of the acrylic pieces on there but it's some nice acrylic um, it's thick enough to where it doesn't really bend give much I've built one acrylic that was really really cheap um, actually that was part of the name anyway it just um, the, the cheap 68 which had much thinner acrylic and it wasn't as good a quality as this so I'm looking forward to putting this together um, and also as I did state before um, the standard one that he currently has listed is a Tsangin bottom row 7u spacebar um, and this is the plate for it and here we have the standard um, standard row standard bottom row now like I said I don't see that he's listed them yet I don't know if he's received stock or he's just hasn't updated the site so I'd contact him first if you're looking for this plate but as you can see it just falls right into place so I'm gonna go ahead because um, the way that we keep these together as on a lot of kits is using the switches so I'm gonna go ahead and install the switches and then we're gonna have some fun and putting together the um, the rehouse 60 FR4 plate I found that has very good tolerances um, it didn't fight me with the switch but it doesn't feel like the switch is going anywhere and once I had about three or four anchor points um, it just started working because basically you want to ensure that all the way around these switches are clipped in and that's how they stay attached and work together so next up it's time to figure out the puzzle that is the acrylics. Um, a lot of times these don't come with um, wrong side. These don't come with uh, instructions, and that seems to be the case here. So, because I have, I know these are gonna definitely probably be at the bottom. I would say. Oh, wait a minute. Huh. Oh. This is the middle piece. All right. I've got a better idea of how this works. And I'm going to guess that this one goes here. So that the PCB up oh, that we need. This one be it. And this would screw in and the gaskets would be there and that gives it the space for the gaskets and then I just have to figure out these spacers all right let me play around with this a little bit and I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out it looks like yeah I probably just have to sparse these out these might actually be here for if I fish this through this way right, I guess it's gonna help if I have the gaskets but thinking is that this pen piece is really thin so it could go like this go down there with the gaskets oh. Let me see. that still buys me room but it's flexing then, yeah, that's the frosted piece. Then I do this one, and the clear piece, and then the frosted piece and the clear piece. And that becomes the top. Yeah, I think that actually might be it. All right, let me get everything ready, and uh, we'll uh, make sure that it is before I break anything. All right, so I think that before I put anything together, 
I'm going to need to just go ahead and install the uh, gaskets. Now these are some pretty thick, what feels like uh, silicone rubber. All right, so I do have some leftover gaskets as well as some shorter ones. Not quite sure what this is for. I don't know if they were meant to be used in some of the spots, but I guess we'll find out. Now, before I even get into the screws, I want to make sure I can get this lined up the way that it needs to be. The few photos I was able to find um, and videos this looks like it's much closer to the top, but so obviously that's got to be the bottom layer because it wouldn't make sense to put anything <clears throat> below it but the feet, huh. unless it wants to go like this and the top is so thin so it goes like this. holes all appear to be lining up and I mean the thinner ones on top that makes sense because there's a thinner one on the bottom so I think I've got it yay me found my first mistake. I celebrated too soon because it looks like the feet do have to go I think this way. No. They just go through the middle. No. But I would still need to have the um, the nuts on the inside. No? And these also have those four holes, so uh, it looks like I'm going to have to take it apart. <clears throat> all right, seems to be all nice. Let's fit. See, that's got yeah, that's got channel holes to go through. So all right, so this this goes there. We know that much. Then this has got those holes as well. So. Now this is where, I guess, do we go like this? Put these here. Oh, no, that just falls right on through, so that doesn't look right. playing guessing games at this point. <clears throat> Let's see how to build these. We got one, two, three, four, six pieces. Some of these are bigger. Huh. Like are some of these supposed to go on the inside? Don't think so. Push this the whole way through. Basically, like this and like this. And it come up from the bottom with one of these. Or up from the, down from the top, I should say. So actually, let's do this. Drop two in here first. 
first. Skinny part has uh, bigger holes that should fit the uh, set screw like this. Alright, got one in. Right, let's try to do the same over here. they're all locked in the place. The trick is is getting the bolt lined up inside of the little hole so that when you drop the recessed nut in there it actually locks. <laughs> so now that we've got that done, all right so above that one goes this one and then we should be able to just rebuild this as we were before and we should be good or at least let's go. Alright, so I'm pretty sure this is the right way because we can see that we actually have some spots for being able to stick a screwdriver in there. Alright, so I do wish there was some sort of offset to know kind of what's the, uh, the layering, but I think I got it. At least I hope I do. But as everything's starting to come together, I mean, I already, uh, I already put it together once and I, I, that's what helped me to get to where I am now. So, because these two pieces are basically the same width. Yeah, all right. So now I should be able to just, well, let's fish them through. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. probably going to be going in there. I am going to offset them and not cover the screw holes with them. 
All right, so we have built the rehouse. 60. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a bit here so we can move on to the next part. So yeah, here's the rehouse. 60 of the DZ RGB, DZ60 RGB. But um, again, uh, it'll fit the other models. You just have to make sure that you're getting the right plate. Um, and like I said, this is a I believe it's an FR4 plate. It does appear to have layout uh, ISO layout compatibility in case you're doing an ISO layout. But this is a pretty solid chunk. Um, it was a little bit of a um, not a puzzle, but man, a slight puzzle. So hopefully this video will serve as a guide for anybody else uh, wanting to build it, so they can save themselves some time, or at least. Uh, that one one instance of putting it together and then realizing I had to take it apart, but it did show me what I actually had to do. Um, and obviously I did miss a piece with the protective layer, but I'm going to come in there and do something. I'll probably, actually, I may do a tape mod to it. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this PCB in here. I really, like I said, I like acrylic um, stacked or CNC'd. But this one is very substantial compared to, like, say, my DNA 65 that is acrylic. And it's actually bigger, but it doesn't weigh as much as this. So for today, I wanted to go ahead and load it up. Um, so for keys, today I wanted to go ahead and load it up with um, something subtle, simple, clean, but a classic that always works. So this is a black on white. This is a mint caps, black on white, and it they are ABS double shot key caps. So I thought that these thought that these would uh, not only look well and look clean, but also offer a um, a good base to mix with the clack of the blue bonnet switch. So let's go ahead and load up these keys real quick. And here we are with the Rehouse 60 with the DZ RGB V2 and some blue bonnet switches. Now I gotta say personally, I like this. Um, but I'm a very big fan of heavy switches. The sound, I would say it's probably the best or not tied to the best that I've gotten a DZ60 PCB to sound. But like I said, I think all the cases that I've used to build them before were all tray mounted. Um, all of them but one were 3D printed, so I know those were tray mounted. Yeah, they were all tray mounted. So. Now, we can see that though it's not a crazy amount of flex, we've got a good amount of flex. We've got enough flex for you to be able to, to see it as well as hear the sound uniformity going up the plate. So, I, 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 got, I really like these Wisteria. They, they are heavy, and that's what I like. Um, and it definitely, it very quickly goes from not feeling that heavy to oh okay um, obviously you don't have to actual you don't have to bottom out you can actuate at 60 but I still I like it and um, I think these keycaps add to the nice clean design though I definitely believe I'm going to come back to it I think I can add a little bit more breathe a little bit more life into the sound profile so yeah I gotta say uh, I, I'm liking it it's a nice clean build it's very substantial and I like how it sounds. I mean, it needs it needs a little bit of tuning. These are, I believe, 1.6 millimeter uh, double shot ABS keycaps. Uh, I think it sounds pretty good. I'm gonna leave you guys now with the stock sound test. I hope that if anybody else comes along and is building this, I hope that it helps them because I wasn't able to find uh, a guide online. So hopefully this can serve as a build guide as well. Anyway. This was fun putting this together. It's been a while since I've put an actual build. Uh, I may get a little frustrated here and there, but it's a puzzle, and at the end I figure it out. Uh, but I do know that some people don't don't like the puzzles. Just give it to me, make it work. So 
hopefully that was of some assistance to anybody out there anybody taking a look at this if you got the dz rgb or dz60 or like i said the h gh60 or h60 and then there's a the heine pcb uh there's several pcbs that follow the form factor and i do believe that there's a solder but one that's less than 30 dollars. it's like 20 25 you have to solder it but you have a pretty wide selection of layouts that you choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Rehouse 60 we just built, loaded up with the Blue Bonnet linear switch, as well as mid caps, double shot, cherry profile, um, ABS, black on white. So hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.